Hi, I'm Janelle Montgomery with the Carter Museum here to talk about landscapes. The landscape genre typically evokes a scenic survey of the outdoors. Longer than it is tall, the traditional landscape might include rolling hills, perhaps a sylvan glade, and a distant horizon. George Morrison's New England Landscape 2 offers an alternative perspective on the landscape genre. The artist was of Ojibwe Indian ancestry and spent much of his life in Minnesota, although this piece was made while he was teaching at the Rhode Island School of Design. It's horizontal, like a traditional landscape, and large, about four feet tall and 10 feet long. But where is the sky? Where are the rolling hills? Let's take a closer look. Morrison constructed the work of wood pieces he found in his surroundings. In other words, scraps from the landscape. He assembled them, tightly packed together, like the blocks in a dry stone wall, a feature of the New England landscape. Notice how in the lower half, the blocks tend to be more vertical, like the trees and hills in the foreground of a traditional painted landscape, while in the upper half, they become longer and more horizontal, evoking sky and clouds. This arrangement also has the effect of making the lower section feel closer and the upper section further away. Alternatively, could this be an aerial perspective late in the year, after the leaves have fallen but before the first snow? Grays and browns of weathered wood recall fallow fields, while dots of reds and greens create a pathway through the composition. In building this abstract sculpture, Morrison let materials and construction alter our experience with and understanding of landscape. Hey, hi, hello. Welcome to another episode of Cooped Up with the Carter. My name is Connor and I haven't cut my hair since the last time I did this. Anyway, today we are looking at New England Landscape 2 by George Morrison. Now, George Morrison used wood to build this, and of all of the things I'm good at, like sitting, standing, talking, one thing I'm not good at is painting. So today, I'm gonna to show you how to use things from around your house that we can build to make our own landscape mounting on a foam board. Let's go do it. All right, here we go. So to get started, I'm using a foam board, and for my adhesive, I am using a glue gun because I like to be dramatic and have kind of that fun flair. Um, you're welcome to use any adhesive, glue stick, um, and it kind of just depends on whatever you're mounting it to. So for a foam board, this is kind of a perfect move. Um, be sure for when you plug in your glue gun that you are using a surface underneath it to stick the glue gun on top of, just in case any of that glue melts, you wanna make sure you're using something you don't care about. For instance, I'm using an unpaid electric bill. <laughs> All right, let's get started. So I've already kind of lightly figured out the direction I wanted to go. Like I said, I'm using a lot of blues and greens and uh, because of that, I think a coastal vibe is where really what I'm wanting to do. I have been wanting to go to the beach lately, but it's not in the budget. So we're gonna do it mentally using yarn and fake flowers. So first I'm gonna start with the land. I'm using this kind of like, this like turquoisey green blue and I'm just gonna coat this whole area, almost like this whole perimeter with yarn. I'm just using things that are around the house. And like most 25 year olds, I had two balls of yarn that really were perfect for this, but um, feel free to use whatever you want. You can use different kinds of paper. You can use um, even things from outside like leaves and flowers that you find on your own. See mistakes, that's okay. Um, if it doesn't seem consistent or there seems like there's gaps, that's okay. We can always glue more yarn and more distractions into it. All right, so we got our first hill down. I think I'm gonna put one more above it just to kind of give you another sense of a rolling hill. And then from there, I'm gonna switch to the other parts of the landscape. And make sure you don't touch the searing hot glue. Some of us maybe are used to that because we're just messy crafters. I, I am. <laughs> so just be careful when you're making this. If you're gonna use hot glue, make sure you are an adult who can handle it or that you have your parent around to help you. Um, but if you just stick with regular glue stick too, I think that works just fine. Now to handle the, the sky portion, I do have this um, 
light blue that we're gonna use. Um, and once again, we're just gonna be doing pretty much the same thing, but this time just with a, a different color. And we'll add some flourishes to this to make it a little bit more of a convincing landscape. Um, we're not done yet. And I have this light blue sky color going all the way down to the horizon line of the work. The horizon line is right where that ground meets the sky. And it's really a basis for a lot of works, especially landscapes. Okay, so we have the sky, we have our rolling hills, and then right here is where I want to put some kind of ocean. So instead of doing yarn, I have these blue flowers that I grew myself from my garden um, uh, right outside of a craft store. I'm going to use these to create an almost wave motion right here. And as I'm doing this, I'm realizing that the style that I'm really going for is a more abstract version of a landscape. Um, I'm taking inspiration from classic ocean type landscapes, but putting my own spin on it by making it look almost nothing like an ocean. <laughs> and that's intentional. Great, and now you're done. <laughs> Just kidding. So we finished the base, um, which basically are the three main colors, which is like the land, the ocean, and the sky for me. From here, we're gonna make it look um, a little bit more like an actual landscape. I'm hesitant to put anything on it because it already looks so real, but um, I have a few ideas of what we can do. I have some of these other additional um, fake plants that I have that I think we can use as um, basically little trees. I thought they looked um, very plant-like. And in my fantasy, these are the colors of trees. And we're gonna go with that. Okay, I think that is a, a good number. And I think just based on perspective, and I mean, we can, this is pretty abstract still, but if we wanna put the bigger guys more towards the front and we can put the smaller guys towards the back, then that makes it look way more realistic, right y'all? Let me know in the comments below. All right, so let's glue these guys down. Beautiful. And I have this like little yellow plant <laughs> that I got as well. That should work for some like little bushes and stuff, I thought. Because you have to remember that everything we're getting, we're turning into itty bitty tiny versions of it. Great, so now that we kind of have the land, we're gonna try to make the ocean look a little bit more real. And I honestly think the best way to make the ocean look real is to use the actual hot glue as a way to demonstrate it. So by the shoreline, I'm going to just pump out more of the glue. And you can use whatever you'd like. If you have a shiny material, you can use that too. I just have this available. But feel free to use whatever tools, objects, and other things that you have around your home. Just plopping it on and dabbing it um, to kind of give it that texture of like ocean crashing onto the land. Okay, I really like that. I think we're gonna go over the whole thing. And the flower petals I'm using to dab onto the ocean with the hot glue, I'm actually just gonna put onto it. And that's the great thing about this craft is as you see things that match and fit, you can just switch it up. And I would recommend doing it in small spurts because the hot glue dries and you want to be able to kind of plump it up. Wow, the ocean looks crazy. All right, and then to top it off, I'm going to add detail to the sky by um, using the ends of Q-tips. I don't have any cotton balls with me, but I would recommend those if you can. And we're gonna stretch it out just a little bit. You could argue that a very important medium in this artwork is the glue. Um, you'll notice everywhere if we zoom in close. Okay, great. So I've let it cool off for just a little bit um, with all that hot glue and let it cool down. But I do find that a craft like this that you've put effort into is always better when you can find a way to put yourself into it. And while this blazing creativity is a lot of me. I would prefer it if I could add myself into the work as well. Now, I haven't gone boating, I think, ever, but I am going to add just a little flare 
to really give myself some more attention because that's really what what I'm all about and what this video is all about. Me. All right, so I'm just gonna draw a little boat. And I am using another bill that I did pay off. I'm just gonna use that to kind of save on paper and recycle. It's important, you know? And I think I'm gonna make a sailboat. I'm gonna use the corner of the actual flap as the sail. And you know what? Let's use the let's use the Q-tip as the rod. This looks really good. Wow! We'll hot glue this onto the work. And I'm using a lot of hot glue just like to really set that on there. And I'm gonna very quickly draw just a little body. And I think it should have sailor stripes, right? I am no sailor. It's already still kind of wet from the glue, so I'm just gonna take advantage of that. And let him just kind of rest on there. And then lastly, I have this picture of me that we're gonna cut onto. And I'm using, use a very special photo printer I have that prints things out as stickers. So this will be a lot easier to just plop on there. Wow, so handsome. So I really like how this has turned out and there's really only one place where this belongs. Oh, hi. Nothing goes better with an empty wall than a great work of art, and this is a masterpiece. Thanks for joining us today on Cooped Up with the Carter. Have a great day.